Dakle, um, today we will speak English, uh, although uh, Aleksandar Venović uh, speaks fluently Croatian, uh, but, but because he is living and uh, maybe even uh, born in Germany, uh, for him it's a little bit easier to speak uh, English for our documentation. So uh, welcome, Alexander, to our uh, course uh, youth, over youth uh, um, uh, system. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, this documentation for our future discussion with students who are at the moment not able to come. Maybe will join us a little bit later. So this comes on the end. Uh, so welcome and uh, uh, I'm very happy that you are again with us. You were last year running a course on sound uh, ecology and the students, uh, all these nine students that we had, they also produced their works, uh, which we also exhibited uh, in two places in uh, Rijeka. Uh, and some of them uh, even went over Erasmus to uh, Czechoslovak Czechian uh, and uh, continue working on sound and I'm sure they will uh, very much looking forward also to follow your new uh, lecture. Uh, so as and as I said to all others uh, before you, uh, we will continue this collaboration in the future. This is uh, our beginning. So Alexander, please, the uh, stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Inga, and uh, thank you, um, Diana, for uh, inviting me uh, to this um, yeah, series of uh, lectures. I'm very happy to be a part of it, and especially I like this uh, title of uh, Emergency Exit. So it's uh, kind of a program that uh, encourages us to change uh, something uh, here in our world and uh well to find also our uh, our role and what can we with our professions uh can contribute uh to this uh, uh change so uh today i uh, will talk about um sound and uh listening so my background is especially uh um, sound art, uh, media arts. I'm very interested in, um, well, so-called soundscape studies and acoustic ecology. And uh, yeah, I, I just want to give you a little bit of uh, introduction um, to it. For me, it's, uh, and I think it fits very good uh, to this um, program because uh, the acoustic ecology is uh, for me also kind of a, this forward uh, thinking uh, field yeah although uh, we have it here um since um i don't know uh, the uh, at, since the end of the uh, 60s uh, beginning of the um, 70s so um yeah and after the introduction um just uh, reflecting about some uh, thoughts how to uh, form a auditory uh, culture how to encourage to shape an auditory culture, well, especially after or while we are still in a pandemic uh, now, but uh, it seems that it's slowly that we slowly are now in a sort of a transition from a pandemic into back into a, a normal life. Uh, let's hope uh, that it is uh, uh, like um, this. Okay, um, so I just uh, want to start to introdu introduce you some uh, terms uh, here. So I will mention uh, a couple of times the term soundscape, and uh, maybe you heard uh, what uh, soundscape um, is. Uh, soundscape actually describes uh, the acoustic environment that uh, we are um, living in. So it is an acoustic appearance uh, of a place, uh, of a space, of a situation. So uh, I have a soundscape here in my apartment uh, here in Berlin. Uh, you have a soundscape uh, in Rijeka, Zagreb, wherever you are uh, sitting now. But also now here, this uh, situation here, our conversation uh, on uh, Zoom as a um, 
uh, has a soundscape. Yeah. So the soundscape uh, is um, something that where we consider all sounds from the quietest sounds uh, to the loudest sounds, from the closest sounds uh, to the uh, sounds in a in a distant. And um, through the soundscape, when we uh, analyze uh, the soundscape and research uh, about it, uh, we can identify um, very interesting uh, cultural, psychological, and um, yeah, social um, characteristics, uh, which I will then in this uh, lecture uh, present you um, closer. Definitely, um, soundscape, uh, there has to be the name uh, mentioned of uh, Murray Sheffer, who coined uh, this term of uh, soundscape, um, especially in his book, The Tuning of the World from um, 1977. Uh, Murray Sheffer a, um, was a Canadian uh, composer, um, pedagogue, and he really uh, coined uh, this term um, soundscape and developed with his colleagues uh, at the Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, um, Canada, this, uh, well, interdisciplinary field of um, acoustic ecology. Um, to stay a little bit uh, at this book, The Tuning of the World, which I, of course, encourage you uh, to read it, um, here is something very interesting. Uh, Murray Sheffer um, does not only uh, talk uh, about or writes about how the soundscape changes, um, like say, uh, how did the soundscape uh, was uh, before the Industrial Revolution and then after the Industrial Revolution, but also how our habit of listening um, changed. And uh, this book, you can uh, consider it is a cultural history of um, listening. It, uh, it, it, it shows uh, what um, value um, listening had, um, for example, before uh, Industrial Revolution, during and after um, it. So um, it's really interesting um, how the acoustic environment uh, changed, but also we as uh, the human being um, changed uh, our listening uh, habit, which of course have, um, well, some positive uh, consequences, but also uh, negative um, consequences. Um, well, uh, you, can, you can certainly imagine that uh, soundscape uh, changes uh, constantly. Uh, when you, uh, I don't know how old you are, uh, but if you think about uh, in your childhood uh, that there were some sounds uh, that uh, kind of you kept in your memory and those sounds um, disappeared or uh, they um, changed. So I, was, I grew up in the, in the 90s and uh, I remember, uh, you know, uh, when I play music on, on, my, on my tape, yeah, and then <laughs> you have to rewind the tape, yeah, and this sound, um, well, it's still here, but um, it's not very much uh, audible because we're uh, using um, a different uh, technology uh, here, yeah, so this sound, you could say it uh, disappeared, yeah, or, um, well, what also came uh, into my mind was um, the dial sound of a telephone, yeah, so if you dial uh, your number, and then the telephone uh, dials again uh, this number like those, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, and then um, it uh, established this connection, uh, right? Uh, so this was kind of this uh, sound that I really uh, remember in the 90s. And of course, with the um, development of technology, also uh, the sound uh, changes. So sound um, doesn't mean that one sound disappeared, but it went uh, through uh, what you could say uh, uh, metamorphosis. Yes, yeah? so uh, the sound developed uh, into somehow a new, a new uh, shape. Yeah, um, right. 
So um, also what is, um, and this is what I also want to focus um, here to show you on an example, so many perspectives is the um, subject of noise and uh, noise uh, pollution, uh, which you also surely um, can imagine that noise pollution is not good. Yeah, it's not good uh, for us uh, as an individual, uh, and it's not uh, good um, for 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 our nature. Yeah, for for our uh, earth. Yeah, it uh, creates uh, huge uh, damages. Right. Um, so in in the, uh, in the soundscape uh, studies. Um, Murray Schaeffer uh, coined uh, an interesting uh, um, yeah, term. It's uh, the holy noise. <laughs> so um, I would like to put now a little bit this word of noise into different um, contexts. So holy, holy uh, noise is, um, well, who, who, uh, who could make uh, noise? So who were able uh, to produce noise? Well, uh, those who had the power uh, were able uh, to produce uh, noise, like, uh, for example, uh, the church, yeah, uh, with their uh, bells, yeah, so uh, who had the power, uh, uh, this one were able to produce noise. So uh, then by the, uh, well, the emerging of, of machines and the industry uh, industrial revolution, it switched uh, also to the industry. Um, as I said, uh, machines uh, emerged, um, fabrics uh, were uh, running with uh, new machines, means the world uh, became louder, yeah? And uh, the world came, became somehow well, not only uh, louder, but if, if you can imagine um, a industrial city or industrial uh, place, suddenly everywhere uh, it sounds um, the same, yeah, because the fabrics are using the same machines, right? So um, maybe some special or unique uh, sounds were are also uh, disappearing um, here. So the one perspective uh, on noise is this holy. Um, noise. But uh, you have also on the other side, um, the noise, which I would maybe, um, well, explain it as the commodification um, of uh, noise. So, for example, to have loud cars and motorbikes, so noise was somehow this expression of, uh, of a certain status. Yeah. Um, and uh, a third perspective of uh, noise, it's also somehow in relation to protest, yeah? Um, so if you go out, if you see demonstrations and, and protests, there are noisy, yeah? Um, well, in, in if we now relate it, maybe that we want to protest against a noisy earth, yeah? Um, to use uh, noise to protest against uh, noise, it's like, uh, um, yeah, fight fire. But uh, here you can see there are different um, perspectives uh, on noise and uh, noise uh, pollution. Um, fun fact, I mean, uh, industrial uh, revolution, I mean, when was it like 19th, we're talking here 19th uh, century. Um, since 1831, um, it is known that noise causes damages like death, that you became uh, deaf, right? Uh, but since 1970s, um, there were preventing measures established in the most uh, countries. So this is a really uh, long uh, process, yeah? Uh, until, uh, well, society or the industry, um, well, uh, paid attention uh, to, 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 to noise, how noise can um, damage uh, and cause this uh, serious um, illnesses um, for, for, the, for the people, yeah? 
and um, well to to really um, then formulate some preventive uh, measures uh, it's it was important uh, to have a established unit which uh, was uh, the decibel yeah the sound uh, pressure level which was uh, coined then uh, or established 1928 yeah so you can see it's, it's a long it's a very uh, long uh, time people became uh, sick uh, uh, in the factories and they didn't uh, know where well well um, what are uh, the reasons yeah of course uh, that was uh, the working conditions uh, were much different at that time very inhuman um, uh, let's say but no one uh, considered that the noise of um, fact of the machines could uh, cause uh, such um, uh, damages yeah so um this this just to introduce uh this uh, term of um soundscape and i was also uh um i also mentioned uh, the term acoustic ecology so um acoustic ecology is actually um well the research of uh, the balance between uh, the species and their uh, acoustic environment. By species, I mean not only uh, human, but also how do animals uh, react uh, to their acoustic environment? Yeah. Um, here you can also uh, take the example of noise. How does noise pollution uh, influence uh, or affect animals? Yeah. So um, this is an intro. Uh, in this um, interdisciplinary um, field where, well, uh, disciplines from music, uh, then cultural science, psychology, philosophy, uh, architecture, yeah, comes uh, together and um, exchange, uh, develop new uh, methods um, to, well, to, to, to explore more uh, the, the, this field, this interdependency uh, between um, the human beings and uh, their acoustic environment. Well, what is the uh, principles uh, or just some approaches of acoustic uh, ecology? Um, well, I, when I uh, had such uh, presentations, when I talked about uh, that, a lot of comments came that, well, if you only focus on uh, the listening, then a blind person, this is then the perfect e example for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so because the blind person especially focuses uh, on the listening. But uh, no, this is uh, not what uh, acousticology uh, aims. Uh, but what we can say is that our um, sensual apparatus is uh, very much in balance. Um, so uh, what um, those approaches are uh, do want is uh, to create a sensual balance. Yeah, it's not about that we just get rid of then uh, of, of of the sight and only focus on the listening but also to, uh, to create uh, this uh, balance between the listening and also our other um, senses. Um, I uh, mentioned that this is an interdisciplinary um, field and it is uh, also really about um, to identify, um, for example, beautiful uh, sounds or maybe some ugly uh, sounds what sounds uh, are ugly and we uh, can get uh, rid of them? What uh, sounds are uh, beautiful and we should uh, fight uh, to, to, to keep uh, them here uh, in the, in, in, uh, on our earth, yeah? Um, and then of course, uh, another approach is to sensitize uh, and to make aware uh, the uh, the people about uh, this, their acoustic environment and uh, listening because it's it's kind of uh, it's it's it depends also on everyone uh, yeah everyone can contribute uh, somehow to a um, beautiful uh, soundscape yeah 
everyone uh, can um, have some way to uh, contribute uh, to how Mary Sheffer called it, the um, global composition. Yeah? So that the earth is actually a global um, composition and uh, every one of us um, can contribute uh, um, to it. Mm, to understand the soundscape a little bit uh, closer, uh, uh, Murray Sheffer and his colleagues, uh, they developed some uh, parameters or, or, or elements um, to, to kind of really understand better uh, the soundscape. So I just want to go briefly um, uh, through it. So we have uh, the keynote, which is coming more from the, from the music. So a keynote is a constant sound uh, in the uh, background. So without a keynote, there can't be a uh, soundscape um, actually. So if you go uh, in in the forest, you will always hear kind of a background uh, sound, so some kind of a, 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 um, a quiet noise uh, or something. And on this keynote, um, other sounds are coming on the, uh, on on top of it. You know, so so the wind and uh, maybe a uh, river or other animals uh, are um, audible. So number one, it's the uh, keynote. Uh, then we have an element in the soundscape um, that's called a sound signal. Sound signal are, for example, um, well, if, you, if you're waiting on the street to cross it and then the sound of a traffic light uh, goes, yeah, means, aha, uh -huh, I hear the sound, now I can uh, cross uh, the street. Same if you are uh, in, a, in a train, when the train closes a uh, door, there's always this uh, sound, at least here in Berlin uh, or in Germany. So uh, those are sounds that have a certain information, yeah, that organizes our daily life, yeah. Uh, and then the third uh, one is uh, the sound mark. And uh, sound mark are unique sounds of a um, place, maybe sounds that uh, we might not uh, hear um, somewhere somewhere else, yeah? So you can, you can think of an uh, example, but um, I uh, remember always the Rathaus uh, Glockenspiel in, in Munich, yeah? Uh, on the center uh, of Munich uh, at 11, um, um, a.m. and uh, 12 uh, p.m. daily, that there is then the Glockenspiel, yeah, uh, starts and all the tourists are uh, gathering and looking uh, up, yeah. So this is a, a kind of a, a sound mark. This is uh, unique, what you find in this city uh, and, yeah. Um, all right, uh, and according to, to uh, the acoustic ecology, um, there are also two kinds of uh, soundscapes. So um, the lo-fi and the hi-fi, what we uh, call. So the lo-fi are, for example, very dense uh, sounds, a low fidelity, uh, you'll say, where sounds are overlapping uh, each other. So, so if you are in a pedestrian street where it's very uh, busy, you have kind of where sounds are masking uh, each other. And then at the end, you have just a uh, noise. Whereas the uh, the high fight is uh, when you when you are for example in in the forest yeah and then you hear that every sound source has its place in the space it's not uh, it does not overlap other sounds it does not uh, mask uh, other uh, sounds so this would be probably the, the preferable um, soundscape um, to to live um, in. So after so much information, you uh, you probably ask yourself, well, why should we care about that? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, why should we care about um, listening? Well, there's there are many reasons why should we care about. Um, I think uh, first of all, it makes your life better. Yeah. Uh, if you not only uh, kind of are visual interested, but also auditive, uh, auditively. Um, um, interest that you have good ears and that you know how to listen actively yeah um, on the other uh, way um, it also um, 
I don't know, it, 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 it brings that you appreciate uh, uh, the world uh, more, yeah? If you're, if you're focusing also on, uh, on the listening, because the soundscape uh, has so much um, to, 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 to show and so much uh, uh, to give, yeah? Um, well, and this is now very interesting. Um, a third reason why should we care is uh, because when we are talking about climate uh, change uh, and so on, we are very much uh, like focusing on the visual um, aspects. Well, we look, we know, uh, or we have some pictures to say, well, we know how uh, climate change or uh, the effects of climate change looks like, but we probably, um, or it's a little bit difficult to say how does climate change sound um, like, right? So this is uh, now very um, interesting what acoustic ecology um, also uh, explored. So if you, let's take an example, if you are taking a walk in a, in a forest and you look around and, say, and you see and say, wow, this is so beautiful here. It's so peaceful and looks so green, everything, yeah? But uh, if the forest is quiet, like really quiet, then you could uh, say that there is something wrong, yeah? Because uh, the forest has uh, inhabitants, yeah? It has animals that are active. And if they're not uh, active, then there is something uh, wrong. Another thing uh, would be if you're standing in front of, uh, of a pond, yeah? And uh, if you see ah, the pond, uh, it also looks peaceful, but if there are no activities, acoustic uh, activities like frogs uh, and other insects uh, on the pond, then we can uh, say that this biotope is disturbed, yeah? Um, so, I think um, this is very uh, important when we talk about uh, effects of uh, climate uh, change, that we also should uh, pay attention what the soundscape uh, tells us about uh, the ecological quality uh, of, um, of the earth, yeah? Well, uh, and, and, and a last um, uh, reason out of many reasons, why should we care about listening? Well, it's, it's, it's a cultural character, yeah? Um, to listen. And um, it is nowadays very difficult to kind of have this competence of an active listener in a world um, which is very much fragmented, where a lot of informations are um, yeah, out of uh, context and uh, very accelerated uh, uh, world. It's very uh, difficult um, to kind of follow up with uh, listening and listening becomes suddenly something very exhausting. Yeah, and uh, because um, through this fragmented uh, world, our attention span <laughs> is very, uh, very um, short. So I wanna go a little bit uh, on this uh, more. So this, um, this transformation of auditive uh, uh, perception. How did we get uh, um, there? Why is it so difficult to listen? Yeah, um, and I and I uh, believe that media technology had a great influence uh, of it. And I also try to go briefly um, through it. Well, if you think about three and a half thousand years ago, what Walter J. Ong called the oral uh, culture. So a culture that is uh, untouched of uh, writing. Yeah, the communication was, was much different um, there. The people had to rely on their ear. So what they uh, listened because there was nothing written. Yeah, there was uh, nothing to look up. Yeah, so the uh, listening was here something collective. Yeah, so you can imagine someone was telling uh, a myth or, or, or a story and uh, others were sitting um, around, yeah? And uh, to memorize um, this, because people didn't write it down, they had to recall, recall constantly again, again, again. So the story also always um, 
uh, shaped differently because if you say something and then you say it again, you might say it differently as the first time. Yeah. So when writing um, emerged, writing as a technology, um, something uh, changed. The 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 it was a big change uh, for a human um, brain and the communication. So uh, the human were um, talk uh, were talking more. They talked differently. Yeah. So this is where the process started. Uh, that uh, the central hierarchy uh, changed from the ears to the eye slowly the really what when it uh, came this um transition came with the print uh technology yeah when uh print uh or when when books uh were uh, print and we were talking here about the literal uh well, the literacy the literacy um culture so we are not relied anymore on our ears but on our eyes our way of thinking the patterns of thoughts uh, were um, changing according uh, the way how we read yeah one step uh, back writing for example changed the, the the speech so we started to speak the way we write right so uh, this is the very very interesting uh, always when a new technology or all a new medium um, comes the old medium never goes away yeah it it, it, it stays yeah but it changes uh, with the new um, medium well then of course um then electronic uh media so from the telegraph telephone radio television marshall McLuhan uh, would say here that we start to live then in a in a global um village flooded uh with um, information. What it's about sound, uh, though, is that there are two characteristics um, with um, electronic uh, media. Suddenly, we are able to record and store sound. Yeah, that was not able um, before. Yeah. And uh, the second thing, what Murray Sheffer called schizophonia, is that we are able to take or to split the sound from uh, its physical uh, source and put it, for example, in another uh, context, right? So yeah, um, also here, uh, our communication um, changed, the electric speed uh, made it uh, possible. This is where the world started to become fragmented, yeah? And also the way our uh, listening um, changed. Well, um, a last remark now, uh, what I'm very interested is in digital media, for example, how now uh, it changed our listening um, habits. So listening has also to do something with uh, communication, of course. Yeah. So uh, the quality of this course, the quality of uh, conversation. Um, there's a nice quote by uh, Roland Ba, who said, well, uh, listening is, or listening means, uh, I listen to you means you're listening to me. So it's always kind of this interaction. But now from a media cultural uh, point of view, when we uh, see how political discourses are created on social media uh, platforms, right um also our way of uh, discourse uh, and conversation uh, changed we are asked uh we became suddenly senders everyone became a sender yeah who's uh, the receiver and at the end um if there is no receiver so what what what's the point of having a discourse um then so yeah this is kind of a quick <laughs> <laughs> going through uh, those um, how um, media technology influences our well sensual um, perception by the way uh, this is very good um, explained also by Marshall uh, McLuhan that was his kind of this uh, approach um, I'm sorry how, may, how much time do I have now? Uh, how many as, as long as you wish 
How, how, how much do I already uh, speak? Uh, now you are around uh, half an hour before we start okay. later, maybe 35 minutes. All right. Don't All right. worry All right. about that. All right, good, great. Um, well, so with all this background now that I just briefly uh, <laughs> uh, um, gave uh, you, something very interesting uh, uh, happened. And uh, I hope uh, you also experienced that through the lockdown, also not only the, 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 the picture of, of our place and the city changed, but also the soundscape uh, changed. The world got uh, suddenly quiet. Yeah, um, I, I I was very interested, uh, oh no, uh, surprised uh, when I heard uh, the birds uh, singing. Yeah, which I would never or not paying much attention um, to it. Birds, by the way, like I don't know nightingales or uh, house uh, home uh, sparrows. Uh, how you call them? Um, they also adapt to their acoustic environment, yeah? But it could be that also our ear adapt now on this new uh, situation, right? Um, at this uh, point, I just want to uh, share with you one page, and this is by the World Forum uh, for Acoustic Ecology. There are a lot of, uh, well, articles and um, artistic works that really deals with this um, subject of the soundscape during the pandemic. Um, yeah, I'll probably just uh, sent you uh, afterwards and I don't know, Inga, you, you can distribute it uh, to, to the, to the uh, others, yeah. So, and what I just want to briefly show you is how the general, uh, well, um, the, 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 the Oh no, oh no. How, how do you uh, call it? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the seismic stations all over the world, how they captured the sound and then measures the, the volume yeah, of uh, the sound uh, in, in places. So you can see here, this was now before, uh, before the lockdown. So um, here you see time so now so, so now starts the lockdown here in germany and you can see here how how it gets shorter and shorter quiet and quiet and suddenly uh here what it's it, uh, it disappears right um so this is very um fascinating how the world got um quiet yeah well, uh, what could can we learn uh, from that? Um, when I talked in the beginning of, of noise, so this is kind of also a cultural uh, notion of it. Yeah, but in the opposite of noise, uh, we can think about silence again. Yeah, silence is also um, a cultural uh, well notion. Right, we probably here in the West have uh, kind of a different uh, notion to silence. We kind of associate it to, to something negative, to be isolated and uh, well, uh, for the non-believers, um, uh, um, silence means uh, or is, is associated with a death, right? Um, whereas uh, in other uh, philosophies and religions, Taoism, um, for example, silence has a huge uh, uh, value um, in life. Yeah, it is something that brings uh, contemplation. And um, I think this is, uh, was the time that we really should kind of think about uh, this, to think about or to rethink um, silence, yeah? And this is what also listening uh, means. Yeah, listening is also about um, to to uh, decelerate. Yeah, so um, silence has to do also something with time, right? Uh, and listening has to do something uh, with time. And to be an active listening means also to decelerate um, time, right? 
So I think um, we can, through, through this uh, lockdown um, concerning listening, we can, yeah, make a recovery of positive um, silence, yeah, to, to switch from negative to a positive uh, thing, yeah, the silences. Um, well, uh, now, this is now my last uh, point uh, is uh, about um, some perspective, uh, perspectives. So how sh uh, can we deal in the future when it's about listening and, um, and, and our acoustic environment? Um, so there's the things that it's debatable. Yeah, we can discuss about that. I have this feeling that technology um, and it, the approaches um, also can develop in a wrong uh, direction means. Um, well, imagine uh, you're living in a city like Frankfurt and the international airport is very close uh, to you. And you know that this whole region is very noisy. So what uh, the city is doing? Well, except to, instead of doing something against the noise pollution, they uh, built in, in your apartment, double, triple soundproof uh, windows, which is totally um, counterproductive, yeah, because um, it was discovered that the people uh, who lived in such uh, buildings had suddenly uh, problems. Um, they had a headache, um, they didn't feel uh, well. Why? Because the, the body uh, is so um, used to be part of an environment if, and if it's just kind of isolated, so shut, uh, shut down, yeah, um, then your body reacts to it. Yeah? It's kind of the signal, okay, something is uh, not, uh, not right, yeah? So this is, a, a, is not really a um, solution to isolate you, yeah? Isolate in the... Yeah, well, that might be in some cases useful, but it does not really tackle uh, the, the problem, actually. Yeah. And, um, well, um, another uh, thing, maybe you can uh, call this something like a commodification of uh, listening means that well, this is what I experienced that during uh, the lockdown, uh, um, suddenly podcasts are everywhere, right? Uh, there is such a huge offer of um, podcasts, uh, right? There are some good podcasts. I don't want to say, yeah, especially, I don't know, when it comes from culture um, radio, yeah. But then there are also podcasts where it's all only, I don't know, um, just um, some, 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 some um, chats. Yeah, there, there's no real uh, discourse uh, there, but what does it? It kind of cultivates uh, that you always have headphones on your uh, ear. Even if you're outside taking a walk, yeah, you have headphones. You don't uh, only listen to music, but you also listen to uh, podcasts, yeah? So this is kind of, um, yeah, it's becoming, getting a lot, yeah, um, of it. So I see that uh, a little bit um, critical also uh, in relation to, to uh, listening and that we kind of isolate uh, always uh, ourselves uh, from the acoustic um, environment. So um, a lot of uh, talking, I would like to show you uh, one project um, that I uh, was um, doing. It's called uh, The Listening Path, uh, the Hervik. And this was a collaboration with um, the university, the, the, the Hochschule Darmstadt, uh, where I'm also a lecturer um, there, um, in collaboration uh, with a home association. It's called Odenwald um, Club. Um, well, it's, it's an association uh, of, well, a little bit older um, people who just love to hike, yeah, and uh, they said, well, you from the university are doing such great things with digital media and sound, can't we do something uh, together, yeah, and uh, this is how we then developed this um, 
well augmented reality uh, project uh, listening um, path and what's uh, the listening um, path it's actually well uh, seven uh, i hope you see this uh, this uh, map yes. um, it's it's seven now a seven kilometer um, long path in the forest between it's the city Darmstadt and uh, Dieburg. Uh, this is a uh, um, town in, in, in uh, Hessen, uh, which is, I don't know, um, uh, 30 minutes uh, away, 45 minutes away from Frankfurt. And uh, on the listening path, you have here listening uh, stations. So, uh, and every listening stations kind of has a soundscape um, composition that conveys the acoustic value of each uh, spot. So you, for example, have here starting uh, with the uh, dawn uh, chorus, uh, the crackling of uh, the oak oak tree. Um, then you hear bats, uh, ants, insects, uh, and so on, uh, and so on. So it's not only mere field recordings and played back, but those are really kind of those put in a composition and yeah, it has a specific uh, um, that has a dramaturgy uh, and and so on. Um, the nice things what, what I what I like uh, here with this um, project is that this is what we call locative uh, media is that you have to go there. Yeah, so I invite you if you are in, in Darmstadt, please uh, come uh, to 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 Dieburg uh, and or and and uh, visit uh, the listening um, path. Um, the another uh, thing is uh, how do you make these listening stations uh, audible? Well, we want to follow the um, the the aspect of acoustic ecology, not to interfere into uh, nature. It means. You will not find find loudspeakers, microphones, and technology uh, there, but the technology has to be brought by the visitors uh, themselves. So, what all what you need is uh, headphones and a um, smartphone, where you then, when you're standing in front of a listening station, that you can activate it by a QR uh, code, uh, or you type in four um, digits. And then, uh, yeah, you, you listen to this uh, soundscape um, composition, which is, I don't know, one and a half to, uh, until, until three um, minutes uh, long. Mm. Just to tell you a little bit about the listening uh, stations, uh, what you hear there is, of course, sounds that you not encounter all the time. So there are sounds uh, that you will only hear during a specific time of the day, a specific period of uh, the year, and some sounds uh, that is not even audible for um, the human uh, ear. But we have the technology that can make um, things audible for the human ear, like, for example, the signals of the bats, yeah, which you cannot uh, hear, but we have the technology that can, um, turn, yeah transform it yeah uh, to for the human um ears so what did we want with this um project we want uh, to um, facilitate um awareness uh, towards uh their acoustic environments to also facilitate the um, acoustic value of um this um uh, forest but uh what we definitely didn't want is to kind of um, create a idealization yeah of this place or to promote a certain naturalism we have uh, those also those noisy uh, factors in those uh, listening stations because this is well how their forest uh, sounds uh, like yeah it's close uh, it, it is in the Rhine mine region you hear the airplanes uh, flying and instead of filtering them and pretend they are not there we left them uh, there because we want to make a statement that well this is how your uh, forest uh, sounds uh, like yeah and i and i believe that somehow through this um the visitors kind of gets a different uh, perspective of uh, or 
towards um, their ecological quality um, of uh, this um, forest. Also, um, this technological um, aspect, um, I think um, this is what you have here. This is the difference now. I said before, technology that kind of isolates uh, you. This one is the approach where the technology can bring closer to, um, to the nature. Yeah. So um, now I'm slowly coming uh, to, the, uh, to the end is um, what can we do uh, as an artist? So this is uh, maybe one, um, one thing uh, that we can uh, do, but uh, we can uh, do uh, more uh, things. Uh, we can uh, contribute to the uh, educational uh, uh, field, yeah? Why not having um, listening uh, exercises in, in schools, yeah? Or in, in music, uh, music uh, lessons? Yeah, um, and create projects where the commu community kind of uh, develops a certain personal responsibility, yeah, and uh, get activated and even participated uh, in, in um, something, yeah. So there are a lot of things that we from the arts um, can um, do, or if you're a media uh, producer, so now I'm coming really uh, to the end. This reminds me very much uh, when I um, um, read the book by Gene Youngblood, uh, Expanded Cinema, when uh, he had this chapter of artist as ecologist. Yeah. Um, so to kind of um, explore and also those exploring those unrecognized relationships uh, between existing phenomena and uh, physical and metaphysical as, uh, aspects. So the artist is not only an ecologist, but the artist can also be a uh, facilitator. Yeah, art can expand uh, our apprehension of uh, reality. He had to put this uh, in his um, words, right? So um, yeah, uh, I hope that was not too much uh, information, too much of um, jumping. I hoped uh, <laughs> I could keep kind of the red, uh, thread uh, in my um, uh, lecture. Um, again, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for your attention. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to your uh, questions, comments, or yeah, whatever uh, you have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexander. Uh, it's really so inspiring. Uh, I'm not sure that I will come to all the questions or my uh, ideas. Uh, to tell you, but I would like first to give the word to my colleagues or the students. Uh, Marco is with us, uh, Gaia was with us, maybe she is again traveling or coming back. Uh, maybe some of you uh, would like to say something, uh, Diana or Tomislav. Yes, uh, I would like to um, thank you for a great presentation. And uh, I have a short question um, about uh, this project you did in uh, Dramstad. Do you have a link about project or something, more materials? Um, well, we have a, um, we have a, a website uh, there. The website is kind of implemented into the website of this home association, uh, you know, of this, uh, for for um, hiking and it's uh, unfortunately only uh, in German. Um, okay. You know. um, well, uh, what? Yeah, sounds. Uh, I do not have. Uh, as I said, this is a uh, locative uh, uh, media. So um, if you want to listen, you have to come. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good invitation. But 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 it's uh, it's worth it. I really tell you, it's it's worth. It. It's not not because only of. Uh, of the uh, listening uh, path, but it's also nice, um, a little um, town. <laughs> or maybe maybe some of our students would like to do some project that is uh, uh, following your idea. Um, there is definitely already some uh, works done, but uh, uh, it's really inspiring. Uh, what, uh, one of my, uh, my uh, not questions, but uh, 
thoughts during your talk. There is so many, but uh, one of those is the, I'm really fascinating, especially lately, I don't know why, um, it's a perception of sound. Sometimes uh, you don't hear some sounds that they are there in your room or in your environment. And especially I can say about, uh, I have this classical clock, mm. uh, you know, and uh, uh, one uh, in one room uh, near my bed, uh, it's relatively loud for our idea of uh, sound, uh, um, which is not necessary if I would just took my uh, mobile and uh, uh, look always if I want to my mobile, there is no sound, but I like to have this physical classical uh, watch uh, and there is this sound and I don't change it. What happened is mostly I don't hear anything. Uh, sometimes suddenly I hear pick, 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 and I think, why do I hear it now? And why didn't I hear it before? And then during thinking, my thought goes away and I again lost my, my feeling of sound. It's over, I don't hear it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's uh, repeating uh, uh, sometimes, uh, maybe I'm more aware of that uh, perception of sound. And then I was thinking, is this with everything? Yes. Uh, like uh, there is uh, here in Rijeka, I have neighbors and there is a guy uh, on the other side of the street. He's always doing some, some something, some loud noise by uh, um, doing a woods or whatever. And uh, it's getting ner it nerves me. And uh, it's like with a little child, just put attention to something else and I lose this. Uh, sound and I don't yeah. hear it anymore. So yeah, this, this is, perception is. Yeah, this is this is kind of uh, what yeah. you could call uh, selective listening. Yes. Yeah? Yes. That you are able to ignore. Yes. Um, the sounds. Uh, sure. Well, maybe in this case, um, that that maybe this is also something positive in this situation. But if selective listening is getting cultivated, uh, cultivated, yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember what I said, um, the soundscape is uh, perceived uh, as a whole, yeah. It is this gestalt, this, this appearance, yeah, where every sound uh, is important uh, uh, inside of uh, a soundscape. So if we are only listening selective, yeah, so I only listen to this what I want uh, to listen and the rest I just ignore, I think um, this um, does not make you to a good uh, listener, <laughs> Let, uh, let's say, right? I was, I was more thinking in the comparison yeah. with vision. Is yeah. it also with vision, you know, is it really our reality uh, like that, that everything we see all the time, but no, we are not seeing all the time everything. We are not hearing all the time everything, unless it's disturbing us. That's more my point. When it starts disturbing, something is wrong, uh, uh, like light, for example, in uh, vision. Uh, light is something which is, for me, almost more uh, endangering as sound, I don't know why, but uh, somehow it's too much light or too little light. If you go on the yeah. dark street, it's missing. So I find it kind of comparison this two, this yes. perception of, of disturbance or, uh, or something that we are used to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I think you're, you're um, right uh, there. Uh, if you go some steps um, back, it's very interesting um, also, uh, well, the difference how our, well, the, the function of the eyes and uh, the um, ears, and then you can, well, ask this question in order to kind of understand how we pursue, uh, perceive uh, our um, world, where, I mean, the eyes, uh, when we look and when we see, we see only frontal, yeah, we only see this what uh, appears frontal. Um, so if I have to uh, look back, I have to turn my head and, or, or turn my whole back, whereas the ears, the ears actually um, are receiving kind of a 360 degree uh, sphere, um, the sound. So somehow also our, uh, this, this, 
notion of how the world um, is, uh, how the world appears is differently than from uh, the uh, visual. And yeah, and then uh, you can of course um, go more in a deeper analysis uh, of that, um, which you just said. Uh, there is yeah. uh, one more thing. Uh, in nature, you were talking about sounds in nature, they are balanced. But if you come to very near to the fall, uh, waterfall, uh, mm. it can be very loud. And mm. I remember once we were in Plitvice uh, lakes and uh, we took a, a, a we, we stayed overnight. Uh, and I mean, this sound all the time that you must hear, it's very annoying. But then I recall situation when I was in Zagreb, staying a couple of days at my uh, family, which I usually didn't, uh, I, something was uh, uh, re renovating in my apartment. So I was sleeping at my cousin's home. And there was this room with summer open window and uh, 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 apartment is on the other side is a Glock of the mm. church. Yeah. So <laughs> first two days, I heard every time I, I fell asleep, but then I hear one and I hear one thirty and so on. After three days, I didn't hear anything. Mm. So I got used mm. to this sound. Yeah. It was yeah. loud. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, disturbing, but uh, your body adopt to that, I think. So yes, yes. I human. think human being is capable of adopting unless mm -hmm. it's not all the time and getting really, you know, like when you are all the time in very loud space, then it's not good to adopt. I think. Or a very, very silent um, place. The same. So if you've ever have been inside of a sound um, proof space, uh, Base, uh, yes. how you call uh, yes. that? Your, your. Uh, I Not was there once. That. I have another yes. story. Uh, uh -huh. There was a father of uh, my brother-in-law. Uh -huh. uh, he. Uh, it was also some reason I don't remember. Many years ago, early seventies, he stayed uh, overnight at a place which we call vineyard, which means it mm -hmm. used to be big vineyard, and this this old house. And uh, because it's on the hill of Zagreb, then uh, in that time, there was very little traffic. Uh, it's not far from center, but still it was very quiet. And for me, I was used to place because I was a child all, every summer with my grandparents and so on. So what happened to him, and I must say, he was uh, uh, in that time, maybe 50 years old, and he was a partisan in the war. So he was very, very much in the woods. So he said that uh, in his old age, being in such a quiet space was for him more disturbing and more uh, anxiety raised as being in the woods during the war. <laughs> and I found it incredible. Yeah. A grown up person couldn't stand absolute this quiet of the nature which was there because the birds at night, as you know, are not singing. There is maybe nightingale, at midnight or so, but birds are not singing. It's really the whole nature is calming down and it's much quieter. So for him, it was also this kind of disturbance. So this, this I found very interesting, this how, mm. how it's difficult also to be in a very quiet place. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but ecology, I would say, is this where, where extremes comes, like closed windows, as you said, or too much noise everywhere. If you cannot get rid of noise, if it's everywhere. And I'm wondering what happening with people, especially maybe not anymore. So young people, but young people who are all the time listening something. Yeah. My generation is, uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot imagine, even though the sounds outside are disturbing me, yeah. I cannot have something all the time in my ears. Well, first of all, um, maybe just to address uh, this question, I think it's good that you uh, mentioned it. Um, this listening, whatever they are listening, doesn't matter. It can music be, or what I said before, uh, podcast, internet, uh, radio. Um, it's very interesting how we also changed here uh, the listening. So if you think about um, the older generations, I don't know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, 
uh, listening to radio was much different than we listen to day radio. So it was more a collective um, thing. Yeah, the family comes together and to listen some culture um, radio, to to listen Hörspiel or uh, features and and things like that. Um, well, today it became something uh, private or, or very very uh, isolated. Um, I have uh, this feeling. Yeah. So this is also very interesting, and this is uh, not per se by the, well, by by podcast or something by the authors, but it is also by the technology, by the media, yeah, that we suddenly can everything take with us, yeah, uh, and we have always something portable. We are listening on demand, so if I want to listen, I am listening it right uh, now, immediately, right? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it, it, it makes uh, a lot uh, with our, with our, um, yeah, uh, listening mm -hmm. habit, I say. And uh, with the young uh, people, um, yeah, uh, I, I wanted to say something, but uh, unfortunately, um, I forgot uh, the, the thing, a very interesting um, comparison. Um, but I, but but I unfortunately forgot it. It got uh, into the mist of my <laughs> of it, it of my mind. <laughs> then you stop talking. Then you know I when you said question. goodbye. Then you said, oh yeah. I I, I have a few questions before Snezhna closes the discussion. He said, now it's over, <laughs> and then I'm gone. And maybe you remember while I'm asking you. So it's, so it's it's few things because you open you open very much uh, problems. Let's say what I found very interesting or very important is. When you said we are all senders, so we are the listeners. So I think this is the key, the key moment in in what we are, let's say, living now. Because I wrote a text in 2018 saying that the the audience is dead, so the death of the audience. So mm -hmm. there is no audience anymore because that there are more reasons. But one of the reasons is that that we are let's let's say on the edge of losing humanity, because this algorithm is, is entering our, our mental, mental uh, intimacy. Yeah, ne, I, I am. So that's, that's something that's already out for, for years. And then there is this existential problem. No? So we are now not anymore uh, 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 public who is looking at the media. We are in the media. So we are the, the news because our life is at stake. So it's not anymore happening in Africa. So this is one moment. I'm just going to say everything that you can, you can answer. The other moment is when you said technology bringing closer nature. Yes. Isn't it an irony that we have to go through whole circle from nature to technology in order to come back to nature as a zoo? I see it as a kind of exotic nostalgia where we are going to, let's say, this Darmstadt uh, place to listen to some sounds, but using this QR code and, uh, you know, <laughs> so we are searching for silence, but the silence is lost. So we can't, we can't find it anymore by keeping the, the pace of technology we, we are, we are uh, dealing with. So we are actually, that's my opinion, we're going uh, further from this silence. So there is no way we can find, let's say, an AI or some robotic, uh, the fourth, you know, in the industrial revolution, who's going to solve this problem of noise, and then we hope we're going to have a silent, silent uh, industry. I come back with technology to nature and to silence. So I think it's impossible. And the third thing, and that's enough because <laughs> there are many, is this uh, relation word and image. Because when you said before this uh, oral, oral culture, so that's when that's biblical. Let's say that's Christian idea né? in the beginning there was logos né? logos word and then what happened the the mankind invented uh, the, the writing né? the book so it's again it's still the word a written word is still a notion but when they added the image so that's the image this is what was uh, Inge uh, talking about about this uh, difference between being immersed conceptually in in sound and then I think that sound and the word they are much more uh, they are allowing images and the image is kind of closing the, the, the imagination because it's giving you already fixed idea. So sound, I think sound is very important, but you know, when, when we are talking about uh, co communication, I think that the problem is the, the, the content, the message. So what, okay, communication, 
in media but and that's why I, I don't i don't know the name but there is a croatian philosopher who said that the the message is the media so what's the message so i think that today we are dealing with the message the answer so and, and that's that's something that is maybe missing from okay sorry there are many many free questions but they are quite complex but they're they derived from your from your talk you know um I, yeah uh, the last one the the, the message is uh, the media. well i i will um the, opposite. The, the 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 message is the media yes the message is uh, the medium. I am more the, like the medium is the message, as uh, Marshall McLuhan <laughs> said. But we can now, yeah. Well, depends on what's now the um, exact uh, meaning now of uh, this um, uh, uh, statement. Um, well, uh, where um, to 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 uh, start? Um, I think uh, this what you said. Uh, this irony. Um, of it, I think this is now uh, we, we can open up a whole new debate. I was, I'm actually kind of also a little bit interested in all those discourse about uh, post-humanism and transhumanism. And there was one scholar; uh, she's a philosopher. Um, I don't remember the name. Um, sorry, uh, but she said, um, "Well, we have to think maybe even our relation to nature differently uh, because we now as a human being we are probably not even able anymore to get back to uh, nature right so we maybe need some of those technological devices and things uh, like that or there has to be this we have to kind of and this is a very radical um, opinion we have to kind of split finally ourselves from uh uh, the nature yeah we are we should not be always above nature and and things uh, like that well don't want to get uh, too much into uh, into this because that would lead us completely um, uh, completely things away but um, I would be more um, on this side that well we should create a balance yeah we should not uh, ignore um, or refuse the technological possibilities um, that we have. Yeah, should not uh, say, well, um, and that's what's always the first reaction. Oh, but you're going now with headphones into the forest. It just doesn't fit. Yeah, uh, together. But let's say, well, let's um, think a little bit uh, different. You are you uh, need those uh, headphones, this QR code, and you're listening to just one piece, two minutes, and then you put your headphones down. What's happening then with your uh, ears? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is kind of how I um, kind of try to <laughs> what I uh, hope that this is uh, the the um, effect. Yeah. And um, maybe that technology can also kind of create uh, new relationships uh, to our um, to to. Well, to our um, world, and th this is this is in uh, no case uh, a new idea. Um, this is um, kind of very old um, idea. You know, dealing with photography or, or something in the late twenties um, with uh, Neues Sehen and and things like uh, that. Yeah, that the medium can expand and educate uh, your sensual perception. Right, um, McLuhan said it extends your nervous uh, central system, but not only that it extends, but it can also educate your, um, is it your eye? Is it your ear? Maybe there are some projects also where it deals with taste or, or with smell, <laughs> who knows, right? But I think this is uh, more by meaning coming to a closer to nature by technology means to, to educate your sense, yeah? your, your sensual um, perception. Yeah, and that you um, can create um, new new a real environment. Yeah, and that you can get something out from uh, for yourself, some some aesthetics, uh, new aesthetics, and and so on. Yeah. So this is maybe um, what I can tell to your um, second uh, your 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 second um, point here. Um, Forgot uh, what you said about the first um, point, or was this something? Was this uh, we all we are all senders? Yeah, we're all um, senders. Well, where are, the, where are the receivers? 
Yeah, where are the um, receivers? Well, who are uh, the receivers? Um, well, um, I had, um, uh, when I had once um, a lecture with my uh, student, we we uh, looked into um, the Shannon Weaver uh, communication module, right? You know, the sender and uh, receiver, it's just one directed very, um, well, technical uh, a technical description of um, communication though, which um, cannot be applied uh, only to, to understand uh, communication fully. But what I wanted to say is, well, is it uh, up to date? Yeah, um, can we, how, how does it now look when we ad try to adapt it on, well, let's say uh, social media, right? Who is here the sender? Who is here the receiver, yeah? And how does this, you know, uh, signal uh, flows? Yeah, but I think this is not really the problem um, here. I think, um, as I do not understand uh, media only as a trans that transports information from A to B, but I believe and I share this with um, with with with, with um, theorists like uh, McLuhan. Um, that it creates environments, that the medium creates uh, environments, uh, means now applying to social media, for example, Facebook, you can take also um, Instagram or something like that, um, that, um, that, that all our conversation and kind of also the political, cultural discourse, whatever, um, is, uh, is shaped by the ground rules of this, um, media right and then you come to this uh, question at the end well who is here um this the the receiver or who's uh, um, the sender and this is what you mentioned the algorithms and bots how do i really know that this person really exists that reacts on my um comment is this a real person or is it a bot or whatever yeah um, so this is a field uh, that i'm very interested to um, to explore um more yeah, and it's kind of been, um, there are already others uh, who are uh, dealing, uh, who are dealing with this, yeah. Uh, I would, I would say one more thing and then we, maybe we can close the discussion, is the, the importance of feeling of time. Uh, mm. We are too much uh, nervous, uh, we, exactly because of possibility of using multiple media, uh, and uh, being uh, aware that we can help ourselves with something, mm. uh, we are losing sometimes concentration on listening others uh, mm. really deeper because as soon as somebody starts talking, we already think, uh -huh, how can I put this and get more information? Or is it really that? Or can I, for example, can I scroll it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's really a perception of listening uh, or, or somebody talking. I think this, this is something which is changing whatever generation is that. Um, mm -hmm. We are just really, uh, in that sense, I think we are changing. And your project, uh, coming back to uh, Tomislav's uh, uh, question about your project, I think it's exactly uh, important uh, such a project because people forgot using the time to listen on something. Oh, yes. Not yeah. only perception, but using this three minutes time, only listening to this moment. Um, yes. So it's just one trial and, and I found it uh, good. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This relation. My, 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 comment, my comment was not a critique of the project. The project is mm -hmm. good. I'm just talking more widely about the civilization, you know, where we ah, had yes. to do it. You know, if you are, if you are get, get, we are getting rid about uh, about the uh, about the animals, so we are kind of destroying the planet now. Mm -hmm. So technology is going to build avatars of the animals to to see. So that's that's what we are going into. Mm -hmm. We are going into metaverse. You know? So we are going to destroy this <laughs> world yeah. as we know it, and we are going to construct a synthetic world in search for <laughs> for silence. You know that's a, it's it's crazy. You know? it's it's something. Mm -hmm that cannot uh, succeed, that's my opinion. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. It's gonna lead to, to, the, to, the, to a disaster. It, can, it can't go till the end. So we can't go mm. further 
much more in that way. That's my opinion. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, du during this pandemic, I think uh, we start rethinking of uh, future, and I'm not any more sure that human uh, can vision uh, future as uh, more and more being uh, uh, robotics and and uh, changing us in avatars or whatever. Because it's uh, like a pandemic, it just brought us back uh, some steps back. Uh, the whole uh, Europe, uh, uh, the whole world is now working on such a simple thing: how to uh, destroy uh, this little thing. And we we actually are going back. Uh, and maybe it can happen something even more. Uh, so it's not sure that the whole world would just go this progress as it started. Maybe it will stop because of some other reasons. Um, so uh, it's hope. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of uh, really um, uh, also something that um, bothers me is, uh, as you said, I mean. Uh, all this technological development, it's also fascinating things, what we can do. And we are talking about metaverse and, uh, you know, all, all, all this really, really fascinating uh, technology. But what does it do uh, with us? Maybe our mind, our, um, I don't know, feeling for aesthetic, feeling for creativity is going uh, back. We are becoming naive, you know. Everyone, everything, uh, we are not interested to think complex, uh, in a complex uh, way. We want to have everything simplified. Yeah, yes. kind of this technology, this developed technology, it, um, I mean, this is what you can see, well, let's say those virtual environments that we are suddenly, everyone is kind of an avatar, but it's all, everything is kind of this animated, everything is simplified. And this is, um, I think, uh, an attempt to, simplify the world yeah and simplify things that well they are just not uh that are just not uh simple yeah and uh by by that to say well we can everything uh simplify but this doesn't but it's not good for the for 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 the human uh, being it requires that you kind of you know, encourage uh, yourself to really um, develop your uh, self, yeah? Uh, complex. Complex and, and so on and so on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, if nobody have a more, uh, I think uh, for our session, uh, you really gave us so much uh, to think about, uh, exactly what you said on the end. You give us inspiration uh, for rethinking uh, some uh, environmental problematics or perception or where to go from where we came and so on. Uh, thank you so much. And I think uh, we will see how uh, it develops our sessions uh, in the future. Uh, at the moment, Alexander, it was very nice uh, that you joined us. Thank you again and uh, everybody. And let's uh, talk again. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Say hello to Berlin. <laughs> uh, send this link. Send this links, please. Yeah, I will send you uh, the link. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Goodbye. I will stop. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.